Hey guys, I'm um, back here. I just thought I'd show you what I've got working now um, so that you can, so then I'll kind of walk you through it a little bit. Um, this is just a simple guy who can kind of walk around here. And then when you stop, he's got an idle animation, okay? Um, I was gonna show you how I went through and did that real quick. Um, I actually had part of the tutorial where I walked through doing it, but it was too long, and uh, uh, yeah, so. Basically what I've got here in the animation sidebar is the action editor. I have two actions. I have idle, which is 30 frames long and just looks like this. So he's just kind of like doing a dramatic breathing thing. Uh, if we go to walk, which is only 24 frames long, then you'll see he's got a nice little walking loop animation. Uh, if you want to learn more about animating, uh, there's plenty of good tutorials out there. Um, if you guys really want, I can probably do a separate one just to show you guys, but that's all right. Um, okay. So, and you can see, I've just basically split it in half here. So we've got the two, these two are identical. And then when you come in here, it's opposite. And then these half marks are where then we do some nice little stuff just to keep it nice there. Okay, and then as far as the logic goes, um, we just have two keyboard sensors, one normal and one inverted, running through two and controllers, uh, just like this, and then going into action controllers, and the first one has all the parameters set for walk, telling you that it's 24 frames, starts on frame one, uh, and same for the idle one. The only thing that's really cool that we changed, really that's nice, is this blend in. If you don't have that, here's what you have. So you can see how it's like really jittery when you stop and when you start, and it's not a smooth transition. By choosing blend and it tells it how many frames you want to kind of smear between the two to make it look nicer. So there, it looks like you're actually kind of making an effort to start walking, which I like. All right. So the next thing we're going to want to do is go over here, uh, choose Blender Game, so that we can have the things we need. Go over here to the Physics section. I actually, want to go to Default just so it's a little easier for you guys to see. There we go. Go to the Physics section and select your mesh and do No Collision. Okay, uh, same for the bones, no collisions. So now when you go in and you do show physics, it looks exactly the same. If you had collision on a static, you've got a little body there and it, it gets confusing and it's awkward and there's lots of weird stuff. But we want no collision. Um, so that way, the collision engine doesn't matter, doesn't care about any of this stuff, uh, which is important. Okay, and let's give these actual names here real quick. So call this one player dash arm armature. Okay, and then call this one player dash mesh. Whoa, hold on. Dash mesh. Uh, now we're gonna need to scale this down so that it fits within our box. And the way we're gonna do that is just not just like we did before, linking to the player. We don't need the camera and all that right now because we're not really doing anything. Um, but then we can select our guy here. And if we scale right now, it just scales down like this. But what makes it really nice is if you go in here to 3D cursor, you can scale them straight down. And we just want them to basically fit within this box, okay? Um, I would focus more on the top part and leave the feet out a little bit. That's not really a big deal. And like I said, you can move around outside the box a little bit and it's not going to cause an issue. Uh, control A, rotation and scale. Um, that'll help with some stuff. Um, go back off of this medium point one. Oh man, I accidentally set keyframes. That's not what I wanted at all. Yep. Wap wap. Okay, let's get rid of all these silly things. Turn off this because I just want to scale him. There we go. So now we have our little dude, and I don't know why he's bouncing up and down so much. Let's just go back to the way we had it. I think that was close enough. There we go. Okay, so it's not perfect, but that's okay. We'll go ahead and get rid of our player guy here. So now we know that he's the same size as them. Okay. Make sure that when we play the game now, it's not going to be all silly. Yep, same scale and all that. That's good. Okay. So now we've named him and we have him easy to identify. Let's go back into our player blend here. So it has our guy here that we can kind of run around with. 
and we're just gonna slap it right in here basically file link go to player mesh object armature and form 38 I think I named the wrong thing but that's okay it'll give us what we need now we have a little guy and you'll notice he does what we want him to basically we start walking he walks but he's not connected to us yet so what we're going to do is we're going to take the armature and control alt p to make a proxy of this okay um, mount that to there and he's disappeared that's not normal I'm not totally positive why this isn't doing what I want it to. Let's try this. Okay, instant groups. I think this is all set correctly. Okay, so now we've got our bones set up here, and you see it's just using all of that. But he's not moving around with us. Okay, we'll just move him into this this uh, this file here. So this is part of the thing with working with uh, Blender. Sometimes you get things, and you're like, well, I don't know why it's not doing what I want it to. But you just have to work around it. So instead of doing link, we're gonna do append, and that'll just pull it in with all his information. Um, no, should have. Apparently it doesn't. No, I know it does. Come on. Append that, that. Make sure link is off. Okay. Well, I don't know why it's doing this now. Control P, make a proxy. Okay. I think I might know why this is. Let's reload the player one here and try this one more time. Append those two. There we go. Okay, so now you've got the actual mesh right in here. And you just parent that to this box. Control P to file object. So now you'll see that when our box moves around, he moves around. Uh, and we actually need to take the armature and rotate Z 180. Flip around the other direction. Now when we start playing, you'll see that he kind of walks around and he's actually backwards. Um, we can fix that pretty easily. Looks like it's doing the moonwalk everywhere. Okay, so that's one thing I don't like about the camera thing. Okay, so the bones here. Um, we're just gonna. I'm just gonna pull up the action editor right here. Now this is gonna be a little bit of a pain, um, but that's okay. I'll let you guys do this at home too. What you, all you're gonna do is basically go into pose mode again. Select everything. Rotate 180 Z. I rotation. So now he's set up right. Um, and you can kind of cheat here by dragging that over there. Um, but you're basically going to have to go into every single one here. Every six frames, rotate Z180, insert rotation, rotate Z180. Insert rotation. Rotate Z one eighty. Insert rotation. Rotate Z one eighty. Insert rotation. There we go. So now our little walk cycle should be the right way. Yep. So let's give this a shot here. Um, it turns around now when he goes to the standby, but that's okay. We can fix that. Um, just real quickly, I'm gonna put this just to wire. That way when it renders we got a box but we don't have to look at it. So now you can see our guy runs around inside that box and it, we're looking a lot better now. Um, if we just stop of course now he's going to turn around during those five frames of whatever that we gave it. Which isn't really what we want but if you had a game where you wanted that to happen. There you go. Alright in the next one um, we'll talk a little bit more maybe about interaction uh, and things you can do that way. Alright guys.